Now we have a project set up with some geo inside of Mari, let's take a look at how we can work with layers. I've selected my base color channel and open up the layers palette. Layers may be a way of working that you're familiar with if you've used any photo editing software before. However, since we're working in 3D, we've got a few extra options and tricks up our sleeves. So let's make a layer. Clicking this button here creates a new layer. This is the most basic layer. You can paint or project images into it. If I select this layer and change to the paintbrush, I'm now able to paint on my object. It's a masterpiece. After baking that down by pressing B, it's now in the layer. More on that in the video about paint buffers. You can now go back over to your layers palette to hide it, delete it, or duplicate this layer if you want to. Also, if you want, you can add a folder like this to help organize or group layers. Next, let's talk about procedural layers. This is where I think Mari really comes into its own. Here you can add anything such as patterns, fill colors, different types of noises, or triplanar projected images. For now, I'll go down and add a tiled texture. This is one of the layers I use most. If you click that layer, you can find the layer properties here. I'm going to add a tiled texture I've already imported into my image manager and change the scale so it's a bit smaller. A tiled texture goes across your UVs, so that's why it's important to have uniform scale across your model's UVs. If you get seams, which you will, you can use another layer on top to hand paint some scene cleanup. I suggest you take a look through all the different types of procedural layers that are here. There's way too many to go through now, but there are some real hidden gems. Along the top of the layer palette, we have this drop-down menu which selects our current layer's blend mode. You can change how the layer reacts with others. The ones I use the most are Multiply, which uses the image to only darken, and Add, which uses it to only add the light values. Sometimes just stepping through the list and experiment gives you results you never knew you wanted. Let's say overall this layer is a bit too dark. Well, how can I change that? With an adjustment layer, which does as the name suggests. You can add an adjustment layer by selecting one from this menu. Like procedural layers, there are a lot of really useful things in here, but for now, let's just use the levels. It gets added to your layer stack, and then by clicking it, you can see its settings and change them to your liking. Adjustment layers affect everything underneath them. If they are inside a folder, they will only affect layers inside of that folder. If you want to only affect one layer, you can create an adjustment stack by right-clicking and choosing which adjustment layer to start the stack with. Also worth noting is you can create adjustment stacks, layers, procedural layers, and masks from along the bottom with these buttons here. An icon will now appear to the right of the layer to indicate you have an adjustment stack created, and clicking it will create a tear-off window showing you every adjustment layer currently inside that stack. Finally, let's talk masks. Let's say I only want to affect the glass on this camera. You can right-click any layer to add a mask to it. Let's do that now to a new adjustment layer. I'm going to create a new HSV layer, which lets me edit the hue, saturation, and value. If I crank the saturation and hue up, you can see that it does it everywhere. I'm going to add a black mask and then paint white on the glass UV section. You can visualize the mask by changing the view from channel to current paint target and then selecting your mask. Now this adjustment layer only affects my masked off area. Masks are one of the things I use the most at Mari, being able to add a tidal texture to just one part of a model or using them to change the hue and saturation of just one section like I've done. They're really important, so I'd recommend you take some time to play around with them. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one to talk about the canvas.